Okay, let me show you this 15 second commercial and let me tell you why I don't like it. Okay, it says Jesus suffered anxiety and is that true well you know I'll let you decide okay but let's first examine what anxiety means all right so I'm not sure if this is going to show up very good there we go um Anxiety is a feeling of fear, dread, and uneasiness. Now, I'm not sure how you could feel fear and dread and not uneasiness, but whatever. Let's go to 1828 just to get a definition of what this means because I get the feeling there are different... Uh, people are using it in different ways. So in 1828, concern or solicitude respecting some event, future or uncertain, which disturbs the mind and keeps it in a state of painful uneasiness. I think that's a misspelling right there. It expresses more than uneasiness or disturbance and even more than trouble or solicitude. I don't even know what that word is. Might have to look up that word. It usually springs from fear or serious apprehension of evil and involves a suspense respecting an event and often a perplexity of mind to know how to shape our conduct. Okay, so the question is, did Jesus suffer anxiety? And, you know, obviously my question is, what is anxiety? So this, was Jesus, did he have a perplexity of mind? I don't think so. Inability to deal with or understand something complicated or unaccountable? No, he didn't have that kind of mind at all. Now, let's uh, let's ask this question here. I'll leave that open for now. Is anxiety a sin? Let's see. Is anxiety anxiety sin disorder both yes worry or anxiety is a sin so according to this article from desiringgod.org anxiety is a sin keep that in mind did Jesus have anxiety let's and let's ask that. Did Jesus have anxiety in the Garden of Gethsemane? He certainly experienced anxiety. So we got, according to Google, Jesus did have anxiety, and anxiety is a sin. All right, so I got a little bit of a problem with this. Yeah, I got a big problem with this, right? <clears throat> so let's go, um, let's do it this way. Second Corinthians 5, verse 21. For he, <clears throat> excuse me, for he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin 
that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So there's a conflict here. Was Jesus a big time sinner or not? Or did he have no sin at all? He, and I contend that he had no sin because that's what the Bible says. All right. But there are people saying that Jesus had anxiety and that anxiety is a sin. All right. So that, the, <laughs> that's a problem. All right. Now, let's just for... Um, a peace of mind, if you will. Let's go. What they're saying is Jesus had anxiety at the garden of, of you know, that garden. Gethsemane. Alright, so. Let, let, and where we're going to find this at is at Matthew 26, Mark 14, Luke 22. And. Um, it's the day before Jesus is to be killed. It's right after. It's right after Peter said, uh, "I won't, you know, should I die with thee? Yet will I not deny thee." And of course, Peter goes on to to deny Jesus. But then he does that after this event where they're. They're all together, and Jesus is starting to feel the weight of what's about to happen. Because he knows that he's going to be killed. He's going to lay down his life for the whole world. He knows what's it's a big time event. And, uh, and here it says, he, he, Jesus began to be sorrowful. And very heavy and he said unto them my soul is exceeding sorrowful even unto death and he asked them to instructs them to tarry ye here and watch with me and again in mark 14 it says that Jesus began to be sore amazed and to be very heavy he said unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful unto death. Tarry ye here and watch. Again in Luke 22, he says to the Father, If thou will, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And there appeared an angel from heaven strengthening him. And being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was, as it were, great drops of blood falling down to the ground. All right, so if you, you know, I don't really want to argue that that's not anxiety, but I would argue that it's not anxiety. To me, anxiety is this uh, feeling of uncertainty. Uh, this, um, you know, f the fearful feeling of something um, that unknown. And, I mean, to me, that's, I, I don't know. I don't really know. How do, you do, how do you just separate that from a feeling of dread of something you do know that's about to come? something that you do know that's going to happen with something that you don't know and you're uneasy and you're uncertain about I don't know I really don't know it's the, the problem the main problem I would have is calling in anxiety a sin and then we, let's go back to where was that at Um, worry is a sin so I have a problem with that as well but this is what I'm referring to just in case you're curious so to say worry is a sin I got a problem with that equally 
as well. Okay, we go here to Matthew 26. My soul is exceeding sorrowful. Um, so is that not worry? Yeah. Okay. Perhaps, you know, Jesus was heavy. He was sore amazed. He was exceeding sorrowful. But he wasn't worried. <clears throat> I could see that. Um, he was sorrowful. He was heavy, sore amazed, bleeding, or I'm sorry, uh, sweating drops of blood, <clears throat> and um, knowing what was about to happen. And there was no uncertainty there. He was not perplexed, why me, Lord, why? Um, he prayed to the Father, not my will, but your will be done. So he was giving himself to the Father. But to say he was worried, or to say that he had anxiety, I don't know. But the big problem is, that I have, is to say, okay, he had anxiety, he was worried, and then to say those things are sin. Big problem with that. Technically, it never says Jesus had anxiety. Technically, it never says Jesus was worried. All right, and then let me close out with this final thought here. If I can find it. Okay, Matthew. Oh, I guess I could have just went this way. I forgot. And further down, when the guys do come to get him after this, and his disciples are pretending to stand up for him, Jesus says, Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my Father, and he shall presently give me more than twelve legions of angels? So he knew at any time he could have put this thing to a halt. He knew that when he was heavy and when he was sorrowful, when he was sore amazed, he knew all this. But he also knew that this is what he has to do. This is what he wants to do. He wants to give his life for us. So that through him we may have everlasting life. Right? So I, I don't think it's really worth arguing. But yeah, I got a problem. To say that Jesus was worried, to say that Jesus had anxiety, and to say worry and anxiety is sin. That ain't right. right? And this just ain't right. For one thing, the word anxiety is not in the Bible. So you're changing the words of what is written in the Bible. In fact, is this what Jesus looked like? Maybe. I don't know what this has to do with anything, but I don't think Jesus was holding the phone with his head, head in his hands. But nevertheless, I to, to use this wording, and then people associate worry and anxiety with sin, that's a problem. And you don't even tell the story of what Jesus did when you refer to him having anxiety because it's it's a crucial part of the gospel he was given his life so that we might have life through him and I think if you're gonna make this claim you should explain it I really do anyways that's all I got let me know what you think